Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Peruvian red tail boas are considered by many boa keepers to be the ultimate in pet boas. I'm lucky to have quite a nice group of Peruvian red tails in my collection. Today I wanted to show you some of them, give you an update on their development, and discuss my current breeding trials involving Peruvian true red tails. So first of all, you know, Peruvian red tails are boa constrictor constrictor. They are a, considered a true red tail. And among the true red tails, there's a number of different locality specific types. With Peruvian boas, they're known for this more yellowish coloration, golden yellow coloration, red tail, very muscular body, elongated head. It's just a phenomenal looking animal, uh, you know, to, to see and to hold and to admire. Among the Peruvian red tails, it's said that there are two different distinct localities. There's the Pacopa, Peru, true red tail, and the Iquitos, Peru, true red tail, originating from different cities in the Peruvian Amazon. Personally, I'm a little skeptical that there's any actual biological difference between these two types, which I've discussed in other videos. Although I do have animals which have been described to me as either Pacopa or Iquitos, and for now I'm maintaining them in separate breeding groups. And I wanted to start by showing you guys, this is a 2020 holdback Pacalpa Peru red tail, born here two years ago. So this is a male that I held back and he's doing quite well. You can see he's probably about four feet long at this point, maybe three and a half, four feet long, starting to develop a lot of nice musculature. They have this very muscular square body. And you know, looking at the side, you can see the ripple of the muscle. Uh, this particular animal is pretty calm, although I do have a sister of his from the same litter who is quite aggressive, so there is some difference in the temperament between animals. In general, if you want a boa that you can take out and hold and, you know, as a, you know, lap pet, the Peruvian red tail is really not the best choice. They're not the tamest of boas. It's really more an animal that you admire and you, you know, enjoy the beautiful looks of it and its, you know, impressive muscular body. Uh, but this guy's doing quite nicely. He's probably going to be ready to breed in another maybe two years. But we'll just have to see. Right now he's on eating medium-sized rats. Probably about, uh, I feed him about every two weeks or so. And he's doing quite well. Next we have another Pacalpa Peru true red tail. This one is actually the mother of the animal I just showed you. This female was born in 2010. She's from the Jim Peters bloodline of Peruvian red tail. One of the points I want to make is you probably heard that Peruvian red tails are the largest boas, boa constrictors, and that they get up to 13 feet long and they're these huge animals. This might be possible, but that's, you know, a 13 foot animal is certainly a rarity and very much the exception. Most of the true red tails I have in my collection are between six and eight feet long. This female is probably about six and a half feet long. She's now 13 and a half years old. Probably not going to get much bigger, so these aren't giant animals by any means. But this female um, has been doing quite well. Uh, I actually, she bred in 2020 for the first time for me. And I bred her last year in the 2022 breeding season. She became gravid and I had very high hopes. Unfortunately, she delivered a litter of slugs and stillborn babies, which was, you know, particularly heartbreaking. Not exactly sure why sometimes just doesn't make it and there's not much you can do. Uh, boa breeding is never guaranteed, especially with two red tails. Luckily, this female was fine and you know she re she's recovering nicely, putting the weight back on. So she's not breeding this year. She might breed in the 2024 breeding season. We'll just have to see. But a uh, nice example of a true red tail from Peru and I hope to have some babies from her at some point in the future. I've found it more challenging breeding Peruvian red tails than breeding Suriname red tails. Not exactly sure why, um, but you know, I have my fingers crossed this year that I'll have some, at least one successful litter. Every year I learn a little bit more and hopefully each year my breeding success will improve a little bit. This next animal is actually a Nikitos red tail boa. And he's kind of wild. He's not really all that handleable. 
Uh, this guy is uh, part of the trio of Akitos boas I have. I have actually two males and a female that are now about seven or eight years old. Uh, this guy, uh, he hopefully he's not going to strike at me. But um, I tried breeding this guy last year with my female. It was not successful. I'm trying again this year with this guy, my female, and my other male who's with the female right now. So we'll hope that the multiple male approach will yield better results. Uh, this guy is beautiful, beautiful animal. Love his pattern and color. He's got this beautiful orange lateral stripe. This really nice, graceful head. Unfortunately, he's just a little bit wily. And definitely not a... Uh, puppy dog tame boa. Uh, I've mentioned that I don't really believe in the difference between Iquitos and Peruvian true red tails. And the reason why is because I've seen animals described as both localities that could not be distinguished based on any appearance. I've also seen quite a lot of variability in animals described as either Pocalpa or Iquitos. And I've seen a huge range of variability in my own litters of Pocalpa Red tail boas, yeah, he's not gonna tolerate much longer, so I'm gonna have to cut this short. Uh, but Iquitos and Pocalpa are really export cities. Most of the boas come from many miles around, so who knows where their true origin is. Regardless, I am keeping them as a separate breeding group, and I'm gonna put him back before I lose some blood here. Next, we have a female holdback Pocalpa Peruvian red tail from my litter in 2015. And this female had her first litter in 2022. Uh, she had a small litter of just four babies. They're all doing really, really well. I held back a couple of them. I'll show you one in a couple of minutes. But um, unfortunately, that was my only litter of Peruvian red tails in 2022. As I mentioned, they're just been harder for me to breed consistently compared to the Surinams. And this female is really light and colorful, very beautiful gold and yellow color. I just love the speckling and the pigmentation on the belly. This female has some mildly peaked saddles. They're kind of thin. And that graceful wedge-shaped head that we see in the Peruvian true red tails. You can see her tail is this nice dark kind of brick, rusty brick red. Not quite as bright red as the Surinams, but just gorgeous nonetheless. It really contrasts well with the golden color. You know, and it's the color scheme that makes some people consider these to be the ultimate in true red tails. So you can see this female is tamer than the male I just had out, but she's still not what I would call puppy dog tame. And again, these aren't the types of boas, the best types of boas for those that want a pet that's going to be really docile and handleable. They're just not quite as calm as some of the common boas like the Colombian boas. So this female is not breeding this year, but possibly breed her again next year if uh, she's in good health, which she should be considering she's put on quite a bit of weight since she had her litter this summer. Here's one of the babies from the female that I just showed you. This is a 2022 holdback Picalpa Peru to a red tail born here in September. So she's now about three and a half months old, doing really, really well. So these babies were really, really big when they were born. They're probably close to two feet long. In fact, they were big enough that they could eat a small adult mouse. You know, most of my baby boas are eating fuzzies or you know, small hoppers, but these animals were just so much bigger. Probably about as thick around as my thumb. And you can also see how colorful she is already. She's got this beautiful yellowish tan color. Look at that beautiful red tail. And just a really nice looking animal. So I ended up holding back a pair from that litter. Uh, one of the males has been placed. I still have a female that's going to be available. Uh, this female, as I mentioned, is staying here. But uh, all the animals are really nice from that litter. And just really top quality examples of Peruvian true red tails. So hopefully this female will enter my breeding program about five years or so from now and contribute to the next generation. I also love this tail blotch. You can see how large this one particular tail blotch is on her tail. I just love these unique characteristics that every boa constrictor has. It's almost like a fingerprint. You can tell their identity just based on the exact shape and size of their saddles. Really cool 
thing to consider when you're talking about your boa constrictors. One more Peruvian red tail to share with you today. This is another holdback from my 2020 litter. And uh, I showed you her brother, the first animal in the video. But you can see comparing her to the last animal I showed you, this is what two years of growth will get in a Peruvian red tail. So she's basically a sub-adult eating medium rats, probably about you know two to three years away from breeding. I'd say more like three years. In fact, some of my Peruvians haven't entered breeding trials till they're like seven years old. So she might be even farther away from breeding, but we'll just have to see. She's getting up. This animal is normally calmer than this. I can tell she's a little tense today. She might just not like being in front of the camera or you know something's going on. So I'm gonna keep this pretty brief, but just another beautiful looking animal that I look forward to having in my breeding trials in the future to continue the legacy of breeding these amazing, colorful Peruvian true red tails, which may be the epitome of the true red tail boa for the locality collector. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.